hey, Kendra from the future here. I wanted to sit down with you and just have like a really natural, casual chat and explain a couple things before we get into the meat and bones of today's video. So I sat down to edit this video and before I could get going, I noticed that I didn't have an intro or any sort of explanation as to what I was filming and this needs an intro. I think maybe I did and I deleted it on accident or I got sidetracked by my boys, I don't know. So we need a little we need a little chat before we get into what you're about to see What's going to happen is um, I want to talk about cookbooks with you first Which we'll do here and then I will show you the cookbooks. I will be cooking from this week We'll kind of flip through the cookbooks together I'll share some recipes with you and then we're going to meal plan and then that will end the video for today But first let's talk cookbooks so I don't know if you are like me, but I find that I grab my phone and hop on Pinterest and search for recipes that way. Um, or I'll do like a Google search. But I do also know that I love cookbooks. I love a good cookbook, especially one with beautiful photography and especially one that has a photo for each recipe. I wish they all did, right? So every year around this time, I don't know what happens, but I start to like crave cookbooks. I have a few in my stash, but I don't have a whole bunch. Um, I've recently in the last year and a half switched my diet to um, being gluten-free. I had a gluten sensitivity that came up a couple years ago. There are all kinds of issues that were going on. So I removed gluten from my diet. And when I did that, I got rid of a lot of my cookbooks that I'd had for years. So I'm my like cookbook section of my cabinet's pretty small. So I'm kind of getting that itch to sit down with a cookbook and just thumb through it and love on the pictures and be inspired by the way people put ingredients together and even if i have a cookbook and i don't use it like specifically for the recipes i will definitely pull inspiration from it and think oh well they put chives with the salmon and the bacon that sounds delicious i can do that so they're always good for that purpose but as we know cookbooks are also expensive and nobody wants to go and throw down 20 plus dollars on a cookbook to find out that it's not one they would use regularly and it's just going to sit on their shelf and collect dust eventually being donated to probably a thrift store that's what happens to my cookbooks so what i've been doing lately is going to the library just kind of perusing the cookbook section and picking up a few as I'm in there. I will also get on my app. The more popular ones are usually on a hold list, so I'll kind of wait until and at, be added to the hold list until I can get my hands on them. But they always have a few in, like, in the library that I can pick up and take home with me. So that's what I did this last week. I grabbed a couple. I'm gonna show you those right now and let you know why I picked these. And then I will send you on to the rest of the video. So up first, I picked up Pure Delicious by Heather Christo. So this is an allergen-free cookbook. It says it has 150 recipes in it. And in this cookbook, you're going to get recipes that are gluten-free, dairy-free, egg, soy, peanut, tree nut, shellfish, and free of cane sugar. This is right up my alley. And not only um, does it hit my gluten intolerance, it also has tons of pictures like tons i'm pretty sure majority of the recipes have a picture with them yay so i added this one to my library bag and then i also found this is a slow cooker cookbook um it's written by sarah wilson and she is the person behind the um i quit sugar I don't know, she's the person behind I Quit Sugar. So she's new to me, but after I found this cookbook, I kind of did a little online digging and realized that she's been around for a while. She has several cookbooks. Um, I think she's Australian. I could be wrong. Um, but her Instagram account's really pretty. So is so is Heather Christos. If, you're, if this sounds like something you would be into, her Instagram's great and has lots of recipes on it as well if you can't get your hands on this book. So um, hers also has a decent amount of pictures in it. I really liked that the ingredients seemed pretty wholesome. Meat, vegetable, like very easy down to earth cooking and it's a slow cooker cookbook, which hello is so great for fall and winter seasons when we're busy and it's nice just to chunk something into a slow cooker or an instant pot. So we do have a slow cooker. I don't really use it that much now that I have the instant pot. So anything that I cook from hers, I'm thinking I'm gonna to try to adapt it for my instant pot. In fact, I have one of her recipes going in my Instant Pot right now, um, and I've already made something from another cookbook. It's happening. 
it's happening and I'm excited. I've kind of fallen off the whole like meal plan, grocery shop bandwagon and it's been where I've just kind of popped into places and grabbed things. Oh yeah, we could always use salad mix, we can always use veggies. And then I don't think ahead and I get back from work depending on whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm usually not home till about 4, 4.30. We eat at 5.30 and then I'm like stuck. That my boys are hungry, I don't have time to thaw anything out and we either end up picking up takeout or we eat breakfast for dinner because we always have eggs and bacon um, or we snack and I just don't like it. And so I'm just at this point now where I'm wanting to be inspired by cookbooks. I'm wanting to get back to cookbooks. I'm wanting to kind of build my collection a little bit. I don't want a whole bunch, but just maybe a couple. And I want to really focus on making time to cook more and prepare. That's where I fall is the prepare. I'm not preparing enough. So we're going to go ahead and get into the cookbook portion where I'm going to you know, drool over these cookbooks with you a little bit. I'll share some recipes with you and then you will see which ones I pick to cook this week and you can do meal planning with me. After you watch this, this is part one, I will be back in a few days with my follow-up to how the recipes went, what I thought about the cookbooks in the end, and, um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Hold on one second. I love this thing that I can do that, that I can, uh, hang up on phone calls very easy um yeah so let's watch let's watch the rest of this thank you for sitting and chatting with me for a little bit and when you get done let me know down below are you a cookbook person do you love them do you have a collection that you use often um and are you mainly just like a person who pulls from pinterest like myself or do you even just not you just throw things together that happens sometimes in our house too all right enjoy this next part and i will see you for part two in a few days Okay, I'm done going through this one. This is a sign of a good cookbook. Look at all of those tabs. I actually stopped tabbing things because I was pretty much marking every single page. Um, I love this cookbook so much. I've already jumped on Amazon and purchased it. I think it's gonna be a good one to have on hand. So I love, like I said, every pretty much every recipe has a picture with it. And they're very user-friendly, easy recipe things that you, that you can make during the week after you've been at work and you're busy um, and you're tired. It's, and it's all like just meat and veg, which is kind of how we eat in general. The side section's really great. The salad section's great. The soup section's great. Um, she even has a pizza and burger section. She has this burger that's like a salmon, Asian salmon burger. That sounds so good and looks delicious. Uh, I appreciate the pizza section because pizza is like my favorite treat item to eat. And I obviously have to eat gluten-free pizza. And I've never made gluten-free pizza at home unless it was uh, cauliflower crust. So she has a crust recipe in here that's gluten-free that looks so good. Look at this stew uh this is one of the ones i think i'm gonna make this week and then she has a great breakfast section that has savory things as well as sweet things kent's coming in hi kenty poo poo hey. we're talking about cookbooks over here yeah. and then her dessert section is full of things that i actually would like to make like chocolate guess zucchini what cake today. what what do we do guess what where it's closed today oh no <laughs> <laughs> you went into the parking lot. We, he was gonna go get Chick Fil A for breakfast because gluten free life. They have a like a breakfast bowl that I can eat. It's Sunday. Chick Fil A's closed. Foiled again. Why do we always want Chick Fil A on Sundays? I just figure out how to order your thing for McDonald's. Oh, you did. Order it on the side. Eggs on the side. Eggs on the side and two patties. Okay. Anyways, back to desserts. So, what did I did I tell you they have a chocolate zucchini bunt cake recipe in here that looks amazing. Let me see if I can find the picture. I'll show you. Where is it? Oh, did I I, feel like I forgot if I showed this to you or not yet. But there that is. 
Um, and just really easy cookie recipes, like a chewy chocolate chip cookie recipe that's gluten-free and a snickerdoodle. Those are like my two most favorite cookies. So I will be cooking from this one this week for sure. I will let you know how the recipes turn out, but I'm excited to have this one. All right, next up, the one I want to flip through is the Slow Cook Cookbook um, by Sarah Wilson. So we do have a slow cooker, but I would probably use Instant Pot for most of these that I make. go pick this up from the library I was probably the most excited about this one but my goodness I would have to say that pure delicious just maybe my new favorite cookbook and this one's just kind of meh there is this um split pea ham recipe split pea ham soup I think is what it's called recipe that I really want to make this week it looks really good so um what's it called classic pea and ham soup I think what I'm going to do is make a big pot of um, chicken broth. I have all the steps and ingredients of how I make our broth on my linked on my Instagram account. It's in my stories, like on the highlight reel. You can just click it there and I take you through the whole process. Um, so I think I might make a big batch of that and then break it into two different soups. Like do a, um, like a more of a veggie, just kind of chicken soup and then have this one as an option as well. I love taking soups for lunch at work. It's really quick and easy. Um, and then at home, if we're just like running low on time, I can just warm some soup up and make a salad on the side and we're good to go. So I think I'm going to do that from here. There are a couple other recipes that look good. Like she has um, some stews in here, but the thing I didn't really love about this cookbook is that she has a lot of really different cuts of meat, like beef cheeks and lamb hearts, and I'm sure I could find it, but it's probably not something I'm just gonna like pop into Kroger and pick up, or Aldi, which is where I get most of our groceries at. Um, but she has this really good looking, where did it go? It's a dessert, I think. Hold on. Okay, I found it. Uh, candied sweet potato casserole. That looks really good, and that might be a good option to have for Christmas. So I might just kind of do a test run with that recipe to see if it's something I want to take to my mom's for Christmas. And then I think my boys would really like this one. It's um, creamy vanilla rice pudding, and that would be something kind of fun that I would probably make in the rice, in the not rice cooker, but the um, slow cooker versus the Instant Pot, which is probably where I'll make most of this stuff. So that's good. And then I'm gonna finalize the things that I'm gonna make from this cookbook, and then I will show you my meal plan for the week. It's getting kind of long too, so I originally planned to do a haul at the end of this, but I think I'll make the grocery haul a separate video for a different day. Because we're here every day, it's Vlogmas. All right, let me finalize this one and then I'll be back. wrote out what I want to make for the week. I use the Happy Planner and I like that it's customizable. So I grabbed one of these little notepads that you can put in. I wrote everything down that I want to pull from the cookbooks that I'm making and then I wrote the page number they're on so it's easy to find it. And then from there I went into the cookbook, I looked over the recipes, wrote a list of things that I need to buy either for the recipes or just in general for us to have on hand from the grocery store. That will go back into my planner like so, and then let me kind of show you the pictures of the recipes that I decided to go with this week. I've already showed, the, showed them to you a little bit, but I'll quickly flip through and show you real fast. So I'm gonna do this crunchy taco salad. It sounds really good. It's pretty ingredient heavy, so even though it's just a salad, I think this will probably take a little bit of time for me to put together, but it sounds really delicious. And then I'm also going to do her beef stew which sounds so good and this one had mushrooms and i've never had stew with mushrooms so that should be pretty good um and from the other recipe book i'm going to do her pea and ham soup which is this one 
and I plan to do her crock pot vanilla rice pudding. The only thing is the, some of the ingredients are I, like, I don't know what rice malt syrup is. I don't know. I've never shopped for that. So I don't know if that's something that I can easily find. Um, and then there was something else. Oh, I need um, vanilla, like fresh vanilla from like the pods. And I don't know that I can easily find that either. So I may have to kind of make do with a few things on that one. It sounds good, but we'll see. So it has orange rind in it. It has pistachios and cinnamon and vanilla. It sounds really good. Coconut cream. So her big thing on her cookbooks is to cut the sugar. So she said that typically in a rice pudding, it would have two cups of white sugar and this doesn't. So I'm interested to try it. I think it would be good if I can get all the ingredients to make it. So this will be kind of like a fun weekend thing that I do with my boys. That's it. So other than that, we'll just kind of munch on the soup throughout the week, eat leftovers. I will take leftovers for lunch at school when I'm working. Um, and I'll check back in with you as I'm making things throughout the week and show you how the recipes turn out and let you know what we think about them. Um, so yeah, I'll see you later on this week. Bye everybody.